Hi guys, it's Actual Mano. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. I don't know about you, but if you are a fragrance lover like me, you are constantly on the sniff. I'm always throwing my nostrils onto things. I stole that phrase from somebody that commented on my video and I loved it. Always throwing my nostrils on things. Behind the scenes, you know, even though I review this and that, I'm always trying new things to try and discover something to find to talk about that I've, I think is kind of cool or really, really bad. And I wanted to do, I've done this before, I wanted to do a five discoveries and five disappointments of late. These are some things that have stuck out to me for good reasons and things that have stuck out to me for bad reasons. So there's 10 of them. I'm going to start on a disappointment because that way we will end on a discovery and it's always good to end on a positive note. So the first disappointment is this little one here. It's called Lise 41 and it's by Le Labo. The reason this is disappointing is for the same reason that quite a few of Le Labo's fragrances are disappointing and that is that they don't smell like what they tell you they are. That can work both ways. The Ylang 49 fragrance, which is my absolute favourite, doesn't smell like Ylang Ylang at all, but it smells good anyway. This one, I really wanted it to smell like lilies and it doesn't. It actually smells like tuberose, which is very confusing to the brain. You sniff it, you think, oh, okay, white flower, I can deal with that, that's cool. But when I, you start to wear it, uh, I put this on my skin. There's also quite a lot of jasmine in this as well, so no lily at all for me. It's jasmine tuberose and it's a sweet one. It smells like one of those more recent tuberose fragrances that are being released where they're very friendly, they're very sweet, they're very smooth. I like my tuberoses with a little bit more edge, so I don't mind that it smells like tuberose because I love tuberose, but it's not the right kind of tuberose for me. So if you're looking for a lily fragrance and you are thinking about blind buying Lise 41 by Lilabo, maybe think twice because you're not gonna get any lily from it. I can already picture the comments. I definitely smell lily in there. You're crazy, your nose must be broken. We all smell different things. This definitely smells like tuberose. So the first discovery of late is a fragrance that I have worn more times in March and February than I have worn any other fragrance. I was wearing a tester bottle of it every day and now I've got my own one, so I'm really happy. And it is this one. It's called Athonial Rosa and it's by Diptyque. And look at this, some of the shops even let you have a little personalized thing. Mine says, uh, Tom, oh God. Mine says Thomas with my little Gemini sign, which I think is really cute. Anyway, this fragrance, Athonial Rosa, is, oh my gosh. There's something really about this. So Diptyque made this fragrance in collaboration with a artist called Jean Michel Athoniel. His name's Jean something, Jean Athoniel at least. He's done an exhibition at the Louvre and it's all about roses and on the back you can see the, his art, that, that's his interpretation of a rose in dots kind of thing. The reason I love this fragrance so much is, first of all, the performance. This is an eau de toilette, this perfume, but it behaves like an extra. It is so voluminous and huge when you wear it. It's not what I've come to know of Diptyque fragrances. Yeah, there are some really strong ones, but this one I think is outperforms everything that I've ever tried by them. So it's a rose for sure, but it's a super bright, clean, peppery rose. Really open textured, really modern take on a rose. There's no sweetness in this one. There's no powderiness at all from it. And I've actually had a comment from a stranger, not directly to me, but when I got on the train, uh, these two guys were sitting down the carriage and they said, can you smell that perfume? And I knew it was me because it was only me and them on the train. So um, yeah, it, it's just a really great rose. I'm so glad to add this to my collection. It's about performance, but it's if, if you like your roses, almost laundry clean with a touch of spice, that's what this smells like. It's such a simple perfume but its effect is massive, and that's why it's one of my favorite discoveries of late. The next disappointment is this one. It's called Hairdresser's Husband, and it's by Lush. You might be thinking, why on earth have you got that big bottle if it's disappointing? This isn't mine, this is my partner's. And when he was gonna buy this, I looked at it and I thought, I don't think you should get that. I looked at the notes, I looked at the price. The price is a big 
reason for why this is a disappointment. This is in Lush's upper range of price. It's £125. So the reason it's disappointing is that, for starters. But the way it smells, when I looked at the notes, it's, it's basically a citrus vanilla. The end. There's some tonka in it as well. There's some oak moss in it as well. But the way it smells, it just doesn't feel as exciting or rich or fun as most of the other Lush perfumes. I just did a video about my favorite Lush perfumes and this one I feel disappointed for my partner because it's it's an expensive perfume and it's not that good. So I would maybe stay away from this one. It's a very basic vanilla with some citruses. That's it. Their next discovery is such a swoon worthy one. I can't even begin to tell you. I recently did a giveaway on my Facebook group where I gave away um, a sample set, I think it was, of something, I can't remember. But the lady that won it, Louise Fisher, she sent me some things in return, and one of them was this. It is called Goddess. I'm gonna spray this on my skin because I don't think I should waste this sample on a blotter. It's called Goddess, and it's by Aaron Terence Hughes. I had only ever smelled his very early perfumes, the first bunch that he released when he kind of launched. I hadn't really smelled any of his new things, I lost track of his brand, and she sent me two samples of his, and this one is so, so beautiful that I need to get it. It is a gardenia perfume, or gardenia. I get corrected about that all the time. How do you guys say it? Gardenia, and a really sharp wood, and then it's got a soft skin accord in it, and whatever it is that he's done with that accord is the magic of this. It is absolutely stunning. It's so nice. It's really, it's, I can smell jasmine in here as well. It kind of reminds me of Lush's Fairy Jasmine Bath Bomb but with lots of powder and a real, at first it's really, really sharp and it, I didn't think I was gonna like it at first, but when you let it dry, it's so elegant and it does smell like what a goddess would smell like. So pretty, it's got this serene, fluffy powderiness. It's some kind of musk that he's used and it feels like ionones maybe, like a, something to do with violets or iris, something in, that realm but don't think of earthy oris root it's like the lightest end of the spectrum of iris if that makes sense i just love this so i'm going to finish the rest of this little sample and i'm going to decide if i'm going to get it or not because right now i think i want to so the next disappointment is and this is by the way the disappointments in this video if you like these fragrances that i'm saying are disappointing please don't take offense we will have different taste everyone likes different things uh, and i'm saying that in the lead up to this next one because the person that sent me this i really really like eve moody we met on my um meetup that i did in summer and she we were talking about this perfume recently online and she said i'll send you some it is delina and it's by parfum de mali this is one of those perfumes that I see everywhere, especially among niche lovers. I see this pink bottle pop up in everyone's collections. And I know that Eve, you love this because you own it. I know lots of people love this, but it was disappointing to me because I thought it was gonna be just a bit more. I can see why people like this. It's a rose fragrance, essentially. I smell in here a really tart rhubarb note as well. It smells clean and pink and pretty, and I feel like it's got a casualness that makes it likable, and I think that's why it's popular, but I wanted more. No reflection on Eve or anybody else that likes this fragrance, believe me. I just don't often wear pink things. I don't know. I wear black things. I know there's a couple of different versions of this perfume as well, and I know it's held in such high regard, but to me it's, it's, very, it's a very simple fruity pink rose with some rhubarb in there. And yeah, uh, and yeah that, that, that's it, I'm afraid, that's it. I will say as well, I've smelled a, a couple from Parfum de Mali and I don't really get along with any of them, so maybe it's just their style that I don't like. Not everyone's gonna like everything. Some people probably love that brand, but I just, I just, I am just don't. It's definitely not horrible. It definitely smells pleasant, but hmm. The next one is one that I wanted to do a whole review on, but I've decided not to. I don't know why, uh, so I'm just gonna spray it now. It is the new fragrance to come from Italie Boudorange. Really, really like this. It's called Exit the King. 
I've always said about Atali Badorange that they're really hit and miss. In fact, I've done a whole video about the best and worst from the brand because I have tried pretty much all of them. And this one's a hit for me. Obviously, it's a discovery. What they've done with this one is they've gone way back. They've, they've released a super classic Sheepra. It's like if you looked up Sheepra in the dictionary, this perfume would be under it. It really reminds me of if you've ever tried Sheepra Chanel by Molinard, which is another, the Sheepra structure is so apparent in it. This is like that. It's got all of the elements of a Sheepra that you can imagine, a classic Sheepra, not a super green one. It's lovely, but what they've done here is they've added an extra jolt of soapiness. So it's got a very clean powdery streak, but you can really feel the Mars, the Bergamot, it feels vintage and then they always do when they do vintage like that they always put a little modern spark in so it's got like a laundry smell as well and a little bit of aromatic i really really like this and i would definitely have this in my collection so if you're wondering what exit the king is like by atali Orange, their new one it's like a classic feminine sheepra all of the classic elements done in to perfection i think the next disappointment is a Guerlain fragrance and this was sent to me by the lovely Peter Corcoran, Corcoran, who I haven't spoken to for a while. I hope you're all right, Pete. He always sends me really cool stuff to try and um, this is one of their newer fragrances. It's called Arsène Lupin Voyou. He also sent me uh, Iris Torrefier as well, among other things. But this one, when I tried it, let me just get the name because my French is going to be absolutely awful. This one, this is the one I'm talking about right here. When I smelled this, I just thought, no, okay? Just a big fat no. This could be any masculine kind of sport, aquatic, men's, for man, you know, showering with shower gel, kind of running on a beach perfume. It smells like so many for men things that I've tried before and I just didn't think that Guillain would make something like this. They do have some for men fragrances that are really, really cool like Ideal and Habit Rouge and they, when they do men's they don't really do this. So when I tried it, I just it doesn't even smell like a Guillain perfume. It doesn't even have that little spark of Guillain magic that you find in a lot of their perfumes. It just, I don't know who made this or why they made it but it's kind of in the realm of alien man, but brighter and more aromatic, I would say. It's like a gentle fougere type sport, pex, a chisel jaw advert perfume. So we're gonna move on to another discovery. The next discovery is one that I've just reviewed actually, but I'm gonna put it in this list as well because I love it. It is Lita and it's by Bogue. Oh my gosh, I love this bottle, it's so cool. It's got the little thing at the bottom like how you pour wine. Hello, you can just pour perfume on yourself like that. <laughs> Absolutely love this. I think this is my favorite fragrance that Antonio Gardoni has ever made. This is a huge Ylang perfume with tons and tons of myrrh, smoke, uh, champaca, I think gardenia as well in this one. Lots of things. The citruses which are just non-existent. So if you read that, don't don't even worry about it. And it's super thick, heady, wintry, kind of vampy, dark perfume. It's in conjunction with Duo, who are a singing group, a duo of singers. The lead singer of the Kooks and his wife, Ellie Rose, I think her name is and they made a fragrance to go along with their album, which I think is so cool. <laughs> I love that idea. I have had so much fun wearing this and I'm gonna treasure this bottle with my little heart and I'm going to love wearing it. It's just a huge, dark, smoky oriental. It's the darkest white floral I've ever smelled and I love white florals anyway. This is like the goth version of a white floral and I'm all about it. So this is a discovery that I am so happy about recently. So the last disappointment is this one. Jimmy Choo, I want you. Look at this, what does it say right here guys? This is, this is part of the disappointment. Floral Oriental. Let's look at the notes, shall we? What about this constitutes an Oriental in your brain? Mandarin, P, 
peach, jasmine, red spider lily, vanilla, oriental, chinny chin chin. When I read that it was a floral oriental, I thought, cool, that's quite cool. Let's see what Jimmy Choo can come up with. Now, I will say this is not anywhere near as disappointing as Voce Viva, and we all know how that one went. It's not super bad, but it's just not super good either. It's like a fruit punch bowl, and when you read that it's peach, I wouldn't say that this is necessarily that peachy. You know, when I think of peach and perfume, I think of fuzzy peach. I think of the body shop sort of smell of peach. Not really what this is. It is essentially white floral vanilla with some fruit, which is what's been happening a whole bunch in the designer world recently. And it's okay. It's pleasant. It's a little bit fluffy. It's a little bit tart. And the jasmine in it is actually kind of nice. But they're portraying it as a floral oriental and that, that it is not. I think it's an easygoing, summery sort of, it smells a little bit more like raspberry than it does peach to me. And the fruit in it is soft and it's enveloped by a, a kind of vanilla musk, which is what you find in most designer perfumes, but of late. But yeah, disappointing because there's no oriental, there's no resin, there's no amber, there's no spice, there's no dense woodiness. It's a, it's a kind of, youthful, bouncy, easygoing thing that isn't super typical, but it isn't groundbreaking by any means. So that's that. And the last discovery is something that I got a sample of when I went to visit Penhaligon's back in summer. I picked this up and I really liked it and the lady gave me a sample of it. It's called Agrabati, which is the word for incense. Ah, oh, this is really, really good. What I'll say about this one is, the reason I love it is because it's in the same wheelhouse as Halfetti. So I'll tell you now, if you like Halfetti, chances are you're going to like this. This is much woodier than Halfetti though. I've all, I view Halfetti as quite a powdery fragrance, even though it's got oud in it and stuff like that, and it's incense-y and stuff. This is kind of like Halfetti with a more intense wood and less of a rose. It's also a bit drier than Halfetti as well. A, a much more crisp woodiness in this than Halfetti. There's no oud in it, which is good. I can really feel the frankincense resin in here. With It, it makes it feel a little bit tree sappy and you can feel the, the coniferous part of what frankincense gives you in a perfume. So you've got a green resiny, almost limey facet to it with lots of other woods as well and a little bit of smoke and softness. But it definitely feels like it's in the Halfetti realm. People are probably going to shoot me down for that, but my immediate reaction is that when I smell it. It's just the Penhaligon style of an incense perfume. That's how they do incense. But I really like it. It's really, really cool. So maybe sniff this one out if you can. Anyway, guys, that is my five discoveries and five disappointments that I have smelled of late. Some great ones and some not so great ones. I'm always trying to find new things. So hope you guys are having a great week. I'm out Tromano, trying to make the world smell better. One video at a time. I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.